See, what I used to do in the jam game is I would say, okay, think Dorian. And I would say, I only want you to use position one because everybody wants to go. You know, you're here. This is Santana. But I said, use position one. See, only one. Or now position three. Position four. Position five. And so once you, I know the notes in all these positions so well that I don't have to make it sound stuck because when you move to a different position in the same, see, you know why I asked you to play up here in the same key? That's the trick question. You know, see, you wanted to move it up to a new key. I can give you the A pentatonic all the way up the neck. You learn one position a week. They have to overlap. And then all of a sudden, you've got all these new places to play. Like, for example, if you... That's still an A. So if you go... See, I know these so well, I'm not locked in a position. And when you know that, all of a sudden you've got the road map. Then it's up to you to where to go. You know, I mean, I use a lot of metaphors, but it's true. See, right now you don't have the road map. You only know a few streets, so that's why you're in this rut. But your brain only knows this much, but it's capable of knowing this because probably no one's ever said it before. But see, I've done all this work. Like, for example, with the modes, see, it works the same in the blue scale. Pentatonic is without the blue note. But you can do add the blue note. So now you have the blue scale. So what I would show you is the blue scale. Watch. Position one in the blues. I'm sorry, not there. It goes. Okay, what's one more time? So who's got this right? Somebody was like. There it is. Position two, the main position. Position three. Position four. Position five. See, so you have all five positions of one scale. All of a sudden, you know, see, that's how, well, you're going to watch me tonight. I'm just going to fly up and down the fretboard because, see, I could do, I'll play it slow for you. I used to give my students an exercise like this. All five positions, up and down, back. And see, it's just to show you how the roadmap goes. Is it the most musical thing on the planet? No, but it gives you the knowledge to move up and down the next. See, because if you go. See, I can't teach somebody feeling, but I can teach you how to do that all over the neck. And again, it's this roadmap that a lot of people are missing because I've seen this so many times where, where, where a, a, a teacher will say, they will uh, e explain a scale, but it's actually mixing these different positions. And see, it's a good way to think about it after you, see again, it's starting, if you're learning the alphabet, a lot of teachers start you at J, K, L, M. I'm starting you from A. When you know A, then you can jump all over the place. Speed kills is A. Knowing these five positions, that's the letter A. That's the ground floor. When you know the ground floor, you, I mean, my metaphor is simple. You build a nice big house that's not going to fall down. Um, is there anybody else want to play? We have a couple more people that want to shred. Okay. okay. See, now we're going to go over, but believe it or not, the hour's already up. That's why we have to go over. It goes by too fast. Do you know what that's called? No. Okay, I'll tell you what that's called. Uh, it, there's two names for it. It's a Phrygian dominant or a Spanish Phrygian. Yeah, I can hear it right away. I'll keep playing.
Okay. Yeah, it's cool. I mean, remember, this amp is not your friend. It is not your friend. Can, can I ask a favor? Try this. Play uh, on the 12th fret, 4th string, using your 2nd finger. Okay? And then... Then do a, a, a fourth string. Yeah, and then I want you to do a tremolo. Just go. It's pretty fast. Okay, because one of the uh, one of the things that I notice is when you're playing a lot, you're moving your pick like this a little too much. Um, and then see when you do a tremolo. That's everybody's PPS, I call it potential picking speed. So when you do a tremolo like this, that is the best way you can play fast. Even on bass, if you can go, you know, like, yeah, I mean, you simulate a pick without, it's really cool. You have a pick? No. No, I mean, it's really cool. I've never seen that before. It's great. And, and uh, but when you, when you play like that, when you, if, when everybody can do this, like watch when I, when I do a tremolo, it's like this, when I play, it's the same way I do a tremolo. And see, everybody everybody here has a good picking technique. You're the one that I've seen do a little bit more of this, but you can pick a tremolo good. If you can do that, that's the style you need to work on more. Because, and like when you're doing sweeps, I, I'm sure you know you're kind of, see a sweep is supposed to be like sweeping the floor. You know, it's, a, it's this, it's a flow. We used to call them rakes, like raking leaves. You've got to do the flow. And on Speak Hills, it shows that. It shows up close. You know, but you're a really good player. Um, you play some advanced things, you know, like. And I feel just like kind of trapped with that because I'm not actually, I don't have the understanding of the technique or like what I'm actually doing in regards to music theory. That's kind of the one I'm in. Okay. Theor uh, theory is an interesting thing. What I do first, before I, I teach somebody theory, I start working on the technique because the thing that's hardest to grasp about music theory is one is all. It's very hard to explain that C major is D Dorian, that's E Phrygian, that's F Lydian. How does that make any sense? You know, and, and let me tell you one thing that, um, if I can have your guitar, but you play really good. Speed kills will really help you. You need, theory is something that you have to understand to play around chords, okay? But first you have to identify what a scalar mode. Let me tell you the difference, first of all, uh, before the major scale was established, uh, we, used to, we used to think more modally. Uh, before Bach, Bach was kind of the guy that standardized everything. In fact, our tuning system called Well-Tempered is because of Johann Sebastian Bach. There were actually two different tuning systems. One was called Mean Tone, mean tone one was called Well-Tempered. Well-Tempered tuning is what we use. It means that actually some of the notes in our tonal system are out of tune, but they're imperceptible to the human ear. Mean tone is perfectly mathematically correct. In other words, and they were both uh, popular during Bach's time. So you have mean tone tuning where this scale would be perfect mathematically. Sound like this, but what happens with perfection, the farther down and up you go, by the time you hit C, it was so out of tune because perfection was only here, nothing else. So, and then Bach wrote this thing called the well-tempered clavier, pieces in every key to show all we do. That's why sometimes it's hard to, why do you think we have this stuff here? It's like our, we go, we go by ear, you know? But um, well-tempered, actually our notes are slightly out of tune. And, and it accommodates all the keys. And so like, see, this is, gets in the theory stuff. But also there's another thing. Modes, if there's the difference between a mode and a scale is very simple. The C major is really called the Ionian mode. It's a mode. But here's the difference. When you hear this. Do you see how this wants to go? See, that's called the dominant chord because that dominant chord wants to force itself, force you to go back to this. See, in other words, only scales have a tonal center. 
like no boundaries. See, that's a scale. Here's a mode. It doesn't really resolve, or like. Now it ends, but a resolve would. Now. That's a mode, that's the Phrygian mode. So if you get a mode, doesn't resolve. A mode is just a mode. Uh, it, 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 there's no tonal center, that's what they call it. A scale has a tonal center. If you want to change keys, the easiest way to, to change a key, we call it a, a secondary dominant, a 505. So it's all theory stuff. It gets complicated, but it's simple once you know, you have to know more of the, the per, like I would teach exercises and I would teach all those scales before I ever taught theory because it, it's, it's so simple because it's all the same. And that's what, it's like trying to describe the wheel to someone who's never seen a wheel. But then you see it and you're like, oh, I get it. You know, it's, it's how theory is. It's hard to describe it even until you start having enough notes that you know how to use it. And like, but if you remember, a scale always has a tonal center. The tonal center means If I want to see how I can see all I have to do is hit that dominant. Now it works with major and minor. If I go like like this. Or See, I can change to any key I want just by hitting that five chord. That's a scale, okay? So when you were going, that's a Phrygian dominant. Here, this is, gets really freaky. That's actually a harmonic minor scale started on the fifth scale degree. <laughs> so you have, instead of like this, what? That's a, a harmonic minor, right? Here's the Phrygian dominant, same exact note. Now, how does that sound like? That's the hard, that's the problem. They're all the same notes. It just sounds different, and that's the hard part about teaching theory. So that's why I can. I'm just giving you a basic outline. It sounds complicated, but it's not once you get used to it. But that's not first on the list. The first thing on the list is to work on the exercises and work on the different positions of the scale. So you know, you know, people say, oh, don't play in boxes. That's totally wrong in my opinion. It's kind of like saying, don't look at the keys of the piano, man. You know, they're all the same. So what? They're all boxed into, that doesn't mean you play stiff. If you can think of shapes, shapes will help you move up and down the fretboard. That's, that doesn't mean you make music with it, it's just an idea. See, again, it's just this jaded thinking where classical masters didn't think like that. They were open to saying, use whatever it takes, here are the techniques, then incorporate them musically the way you want.